Hi guys, um, in the earlier video we had solved absolute value equations and as promised today we are going to be solving absolute value inequalities. So absolute value inequality, so pretty much we got an absolute value and an inequality symbol. The question is how do we solve these bad boys? To solve an absolute value equation, uh, the strategy, uh, the, the the setup is, is the same, okay? The initial setup, sorry, I get nervous, okay? So the first step you need to do is you need to isolate the absolute value, kind of like when we did with the equation. So step one, isolate the absolute value, and then step two, solve the corresponding compound, not equation, but solve the corresponding compound inequality, okay? Now, when it comes to solving uh, absolute value inequalities, the corresponding compound inequalities, they may either be an and compound inequality or an or compound inequality. So how can you tell if you have the is greater than or is greater than or equal to, it's going to be an or compound inequality. And if you have an is less than or an is, sorry, and if you have an is less than or is less than or equal to, it's going to be an and compound inequality. So this is where me and your book or most books fight um, because um. It's not that the information is incorrect. It is totally correct, okay? But as a student, uh, I, I, I always wrote it wrong because I would put the inequality uh, in a different order. But if you use the same strategy that we did with the absolute value equation or the earlier video, then you don't really have to worry about, okay? So this is how it's going to go down. First case scenario. If we have an absolute value, once it's isolated, and if you have the is greater than, how are you going to set it up? So you're going to say either the inside, copy down the inequality symbol, is greater than C or is opposite, so you just put a minus sign in front, is greater than C. Okay? Do it like that and you're good. It's kind of like we did with the absolute value equations. We have said inside equals number or opposite equals number. Same thing here. We just replaced the equal sign with the inequality symbol. Your book will say um, this one the same, and the second one they will say ax plus b is less than negative c. It's the same thing, but as a student, um, I, I would always get this wrong. Cause, but in this case, I don't have to worry about it. I got to flip it because the book said so. Use the same strategy from the earlier uh, section and this one, okay? And then you're good to go. Now, case two. What if we have an absolute value inequality with the is less than? Again, we're assuming that the absolute value is isolated. So to set it up, we're going to say either the inside is less than C. And I'm used to saying or, but it's and. So we're going to say the inside is less than C and is opposite is less than C. So how do we know if we're going to put in is greater than or is less than? You just copy it. Okay, there's no need to memorize. The only thing you have to remember is if it's gonna, if it's going to be a, an and or or compound inequality. Now, do I have a silly memory aid for you? Of course. Okay, so uh, am I in the habit of making silly memory aids? Of course not. But I remember uh, one semester I, I was in I was in a room, it's like a, like a study hall, like, and then I was running from um, from side to side. So I got a good workout. And I was, I, and I said so many times, I think I said it about 10 times, like in, in like under 15 minutes. And I had said, if in it's, if it's in it's greater than, it's an or kind of problem. And if it's in it's less than after an and problem. And I said it over and over again. I said it so many times that the word Gorland just came up to me. Okay. It's pretty silly, but you know, like those silly songs, the sillier, the sillier a song is, uh, the more likely it will stick to you. So Gorland, what is that? That's uh, something silly that I made up to help me with the absolute value inequalities. So the G is for the is greater than. So if we have an is greater than or is greater than or equal to, it's going to be an or kind of problem. But if we have an is less than or is less than or equal to, it's going to be an kind of problem. Okay. So once I share this with my students, they're like, oh, okay, it's pretty cool. But then they try to do Gorland for everything. And I'm like, no, my friend. So this silly thing, silly memory aid, it's only for absolute value inequalities. If it's not an absolute value inequality, no Gorland. Okay, 
So fun problem number one is not going to be on the test, but I want to get out of the way those technical difficulties. <coughs> so we have problem A, um, the directions. Circle the absolute value inequalities and then set up the corresponding compound inequality. Okay, so we want to circle the absolute value inequalities. So if you are an absolute value inequality, we're going to circle you and then we're going to do something else. Problem A, inequality, but no absolute value. How much is cross it out for dramatic effect? Problem B, absolute value, but no inequality. So it's not an absolute value inequality. No Gorland. Okay, if you start doing Gorland here or here, I'm going to start crying. Problem C. Absolute value inequality symbol. Yep, absolute value inequality. How are we going to solve them? Make sure one, one, make sure the absolute value is isolated, and then two, set up the corresponding compound inequality. So, absolute value inequality, how am I going to split it or set it up? I'm going to go land it. What do I have? We have one of the is greater than. So, when we write it, this is going to be an or kind of problem. So we're going to say that the inside is greater than 5 or its opposite is greater than 5. You can solve it at your house for fake extra credit, but I just want to get this out. Second problem, or second, is letter D. Sorry, I don't know how to count. Absolute value inequality symbol. So we have another absolute value inequality. For this one, we're going to Gorland it. We're going to use Gorland to set up, to help us set up the corresponding compound inequality. In this case, we have one of the is less than, so it's going to be an and kind of problem. So we're going to say that the inside is less than 5 and its opposite is also less than 5. So for this one, we're going to take the union. Again, we're not going to solve it. Okay, and the other one, we're going to find the intersection. And we had talked about how to find the union and intersection in an earlier video. So I made a playlist for this chapter so you can go back to how to find union and, and or intersection or however I labeled it. Cool. So let's go ahead and uh, work on actual test problems. Okay, so we have four problems and then we're good to go for the day. Okay, sorry. So fun problem number two, the directions read solve, and then we are asked to write the solution in interval notation. So let's go ahead and do this. So first problem, we have one third times the absolute value of 2m minus 1 increased by 5, and that should be less than 6. So I need to have a clear idea of what kind of problem we are trying to solve in order for me to have a fair shot to actually answer it. We have an absolute value inequality symbol, so absolute value inequality. We're totally going to go land it. But before we can split it or before I can set up the corresponding uh, compound inequality, my primary goal is to isolate that absolute value. So if you're not with the absolute value, you got to go. Let's go ahead and take care of that 5. Opposite of addition is subtraction. So to undo the addition by 5, let's go ahead and subtract it from both sides. And that will leave us with 1 third times 2, sorry, times the absolute value of 2m minus 1 is less than 1. If I make a mistake, let me know. <coughs> All right, let's go ahead and get rid of this fraction. You have different ways to go about it. We can say, like, what are we going to do to get rid of the division by 3? We can say LCD, or we can say reciprocal. No one's going to know, okay? So to get rid of the times 1 third, we're not going to divide by 1 third because uh, I don't have time for that, but we'll just multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of, of a third is 3, so let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 3, and that will leave us with the absolute value now at this point finally isolated. Okay, so absolute value of 2m minus 1 is less than 3. So I'm going to remind myself, how am I going to split it? What kind of compound inequality am I going to set up? Is it going to be an and kind of problem or an or kind of problem? In this case, we have one of the is less than, so it's going to be an and kind of problem. So we're going to say that either, not, I'm just saying either, sorry. So we're going to say that the inside 
is less than 3, and we already said it's and. And is opposite, so we just put a negative sign in front. Don't forget to put parentheses because we gotta take the opposite of both terms. Cool. Let's go ahead, solve each inequality, and then find the intersection. So for the first inequality, it's a two-step problem. To undo the subtraction, let's go ahead, add it to both sides, and that will leave us with 2m is less than 4. Cool. To get rid of the times 2, let's go ahead, divide both sides by 2, and that will leave us with m is less than 2. All right. One inequality down, one more to go. For the second inequality, let's go ahead take that opposite or, you know, how we speak to each other. Let's distribute the negative. No one's going to know how you dish it out. You're going to get it right anyways. Opposite of a positive term is a negative term. Opposite of subtracting one is adding one. And that should be less than 3. We're on it. To isolate the variable term, let's go ahead and uh, move that one. Opposite of addition is subtraction. And after we subtract one from both sides, that will leave us with negative 2m is less than 2. Remember, guys, pause and rewind as many times as you want. <coughs> to get rid of the times negative 2, let's go ahead divide both sides by negative 2. And if you see my earlier videos, I'm going to say let's bust out the sirens. Okay, so gentle reminder, at any point when it comes to working with inequalities, if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you got to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. But no one speaks like that, so we'll just say flip. Okay, so our new statement should read m is greater than negative 1. Okay, I said it before, this rainbow action gets in my way. I, I need to see them in a straight line, not like for, uh, for full credit, it's just for me. If I don't see everything in the straight line, in the same row, I'm going to make a mistake. So, we solve each inequality. We have an and compound inequality. We have uh, established, I think, that we have to find the uh, intersection. So, we want to know what is it that they have in common. Now, I know you're a genius, but I'm not. But if you're like, oh, yeah, I know, Miss Torres, the numbers that are under 2 and at the same time greater than 1 are the numbers that start here and end there. Go for it. But since you're not taking the test from me, you know my strategy. I'm going to show my work. So I'm going to go ahead and graph. I'm going to graph both of these inequalities uh, one at a time. And I'm going to highlight both endpoints on each one. So the endpoints are 2 and negative 1, where negative 1 is smaller. So negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2. So first inequality, we have m is less than 2. So 2 is out because we don't have the equal to part, and the actual solutions should be smaller. So we're going to pull 2 to the left. Second inequality, m is greater than negative 1. So negative 1 is out, and the actual solution should be larger. So we're going to pull to the right. So if I wasn't afraid to show my face, I'm not because I don't want to comb my hair, okay? I will like, show you with my hands, but whatever. So if I was able to physically uh, sandwich this together, I want to know what is it that they have in common. And the common elements will be that space where they overlap. So this is my way of, of showing you my fingers in the air. I'm going to go ahead, highlight or box in what are those elements that would overlap or that they have in common. And in this case, the numbers that they have in common or that are in the intersection are all the real numbers between negative 1 and positive 2. Then we just have to deal with uh, what about the endpoint? Are they both? Oh, sorry, I put an open circle for some reason. Okay, I was just gonna uh, uh, graph the ones in between. <laughs> I don't know about the endpoints. Hopefully, I got it right. So is negative 1 in the intersection? Do, do both inequalities have negative 1 as a solution? Negative 1 is in the top one, but it's not in the bottom one. So they don't have that one in common. So open circle. Is 2 part of the solution? Is 2 in the intersection? Do they have 2 in common? No, that's a lie. Okay, so 2 is not in the top. So that's it. You don't have to see if it's in the bottom. And if, as soon as you realize that one of them doesn't have it, then you're good to go. So now, do we have to graph? No, but um, for me, it's very hard to go straight to the answer. So what is the solution set? The solution set, well, this is the graph. And in interval notation, uh, the solution set is given by a set of all real numbers from negative 1 to 2, where both negative 1 and um, positive 2 are excluded. Okay, so it's the interval of those numbers. Cool. So I said that we're going to do a total of, a total of 
sorry, of four problems. That was our first problem, so I owe you two more. Let me see if I can write on the back of this page. Um, no. Okay, I'm not gonna write on this page because you see how you can see the work in the back, which brings me to a good point. So, for my students, PSA. The reason why I ask you to write only on one side of each paper is for this reason. When you scan your work, um, the, the work that you have behind, it's going to uh, go through, which will make it more difficult to uh, read. So I kindly ask if if you don't write on the back of any of the pages. Now, if it's just if it's something that you're, gonna, you're not going to turn in, then do whatever you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and knock out problem B. So we're going to do a total of um, four problems. This is our second one. So problem B, we have, where am I? Negative 2 times the absolute value of 5 minus 2x plus 15 is less than or equal to negative 15. Okay, so we have an absolute value inequality symbol, so we have another absolute value inequality. Your primary goal is to isolate the absolute value and then you set up the corresponding compound inequality, whether it's an and or it's an or. <coughs> So to get rid of that plus 15, opposite of addition is subtraction. Let's go ahead and subtract 15 from both sides. And we have negative 2 times the absolute value of 2 minus x is less than or equal to negative 30. Fantastic. I think I wrote this wrong. So Sorry, this should have been negative 5. Could I have left it at negative 15? Yeah, I could have, but then I'm not going to get the answer that I was looking for. And then we're going to have problems. Okay, and then with that updated problem, my mistake, guys, so that should give us a negative 20. At a first glance, I want to say, look, absolute value, negative number, shortcut. Um, yeah, but the, we cannot make that call with that shortcut because the absolute value is not isolated. So let's do this. To get rid of the times negative 2, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2. And let's go ahead and bust out the sirens to remind ourselves that at any point, if we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, there's no way around it. We have to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol, or as the young people say, flip. Okay. All right, cool. So then that will leave us with absolute value of 5 minus 2x is less than or equal. Oh, I'm a mistake. I can't read my own writing. We have to flip it. It defeats the purpose of me making a big fuss right here. We got to flip it. It's greater than or equal to 10. Fantastic. Okay. Now that the absolute value is isolated, now we can make the call or ask ourselves, um, is it going to be an and or or kind of problem? So let me go ahead and write out Gorland. Highlight the inequality. We have one of the is greater than, so it's going to be an or kind of problem. So we're going to say that the inside is greater than or equal to 10. Or is opposite is greater than or equal to 10. Something that I want to point out is this. As you take your quizzes, tests, and all that good stuff, and including your homework, um, I need to see that two or three letter word. If you fail to write or or and, there's no way that I will know that you were uh, genuinely trying to find the union or intersection. So if I don't see those two or three letters, zero, my friends. I'm sorry. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve each inequality and then take the union. So first inequality, to isolate that variable term, uh, let's uh, subtract 5 from both sides. And that will give us negative 2x is greater than or equal to 5. To finish it off, to get rid of the times negative 2, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2. And you know the speech. Let's make a big fuss on paper, bust out the siren, let's flip that inequality, and that should be x is less than or equal to whatever your heart desires. You can leave it as an improper fraction, but if you're not going to sleep tonight, then write it as a decimal, which is uh, 2 and a half. So I guess it's a negative 2.5. Which one do I want to see? either one i'm not anti-decimals i'm just anti-rounding okay so uh that's it so whichever one you want to see cool i'm going to stick with this one because our students like decimals so let's give the people what they want okay one inequality down one more to go let's go ahead distribute that negative so that will give us negative five plus two x is greater than or equal to ten fantastic 
to isolate that variable term to get rid of the minus 5 let's go ahead and do the opposite operation which is addition and that will leave us with 2x is greater than or equal to 15 for the grand finale to get rid of the times 2 let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2 and there is no flipping this time around so we have x is greater than or equal to any equivalent form of 15 15 half so I think that's like seven and a half or 7.5. Whatever you like, that's what I, I want to see. I'm going to give the people what they want, so I'll leave them in decimal form. And you know my speech. Um, I like to make sure that my last statement lines up so that way I don't have to look all over the place. So we have an or compound inequality, so we want to find the union. And if we want to find the union, we're going to combine our results. Okay? So since we're going to combine the solution, since we're going to combine um, our inequalities, there is really no need for us to graph them. Oh, wrong problem. I can't find my problem. Since we're going to combine the, the inequalities, there's really no need for us to graph them separately so we can combine them later. Let's just combine them right now. Okay. So the endpoints are negative 2.5 and uh, 7.5, where negative 2.5 is smaller negative 2.5 and 7.5 the book doesn't like decimals so you will see uh, negative 5 halves and 15 halves I don't really care as long as you don't round first inequality we have x is less than or equal to negative 2.5 the inequality symbol has the equal to part so we can graph that endpoint the remaining solutions are the values that are smaller so we're gonna go ahead pull to the left Second inequality, we have x is greater than or equal to 7.5. So same speech, 7.5 is in, and the remaining solution should be larger. This is a pretty clean graph. There's nothing overlapping, so I don't have to worry about cleaning it up. Cleaning it up. So that is the graph of the solution. Now I'm going to use this graph to write the answer in a set notation. Because we have two pieces, we're going to have a two intervals and we'll connect it with the union symbol. So first piece, we're coming from the negative side, so it's going to be a interval from negative infinity to negative 2.5, where negative 2.5 is included. Union, okay, because we don't say the word or in interval notation. Okay, uh, second interval, we start at 7.5 and then we pull towards the positive direction or infinity. So in this case, uh, oh sorry, where 7.5 is included, so bracket. So in this case, the solution is given by the union of these two intervals. Interval number one is the interval from negative infinity to negative 2.5, where negative 2.5 is included. The second interval is the interval from 7.5 to infinity, where 7.5 is included. Or what is it? 15 halves is included. So remember, uh, brackets if you're in, parentheses if you're out. The infinities always get parentheses because they don't represent specific numbers. Okay, so we are going to do a total of four problems. This is our, uh, our second problem. I got two more to go. So let me go ahead and find paper. Okay, problem C. Problem C, we have absolute value of 3x minus 7 plus 8 is greater than or equal to 5. Oh, juicy problem. So let's do this. Absolute value, inequality symbol, absolute value, inequality. So let's go land it. So first things first, we got to isolate the absolute value. If you're not with the absolute value, you got to go. So to undo the addition by 8, let's go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides. And that will leave us with absolute value of 3x minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Now, for those of us that read the book before watching this video, oh, you're my kind of student, okay? Uh, you may go straight to answer. But for me, uh, I'm just going to answer it algebraically, meaning I'm going to show all my work. Okay, absolute value is isolated. So now I can ask myself, how am I going to set up the compound inequality? Is it going to be an and or or? I don't know. Let me go land it. Because we have one of the is greater than, it's going to be an or kind of problem. So we're going to say that the inside is greater than negative 3 or its opposite is greater than negative 3. And I'm supposed to say greater than or equal to, but whatever. Okay. 
So we have an or kind of problem. So we're going to say that the inside, copy your inequality, is greater than or equal to negative 3. We have said or. Or is opposite. So uh, again, whether um, it's opposite is greater than or equal to negative 3. Whether we have a absolute value inequality with the is less than or is greater than, or absolute value equation, when you split it up, it's always the same. Inside, symbol, number. Opposite, symbol, number. If you do it like this, you don't really have to worry about like, oh, I forgot to switch this or whatever. <coughs> Trust me. Okay, for the first inequality, let's go ahead and add 7 to both sides. And that will give us 3x is greater than or equal to 4. To finish it off, to give it the times 3, let's go ahead and divide both sides by 3. And that will give us x is greater than or equal to 4 thirds. If you choose to write this as a decimal, bear in mind that this is a repeating decimal. So um, you will need the over bar. So one inequality down, one more to go. Let's solve it and then take the union. For the second inequality, let's take the opposite. Opposite of a positive term is a negative term. Opposite of a negative term is a positive term. And that should be greater than or equal to negative 3. Work your magic. Let's go ahead and isolate this variable term. To undo an addition, let's go ahead and subtract, and that will give us negative 3x is greater than or equal to negative 10. Perfect. We're almost there. To finish it off, to isolate the variable, to give it the times negative 3, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 3, and then we bust out the sirens. Uh, do we have to do this on the test? Uh, no, but I recommend you do, so that way, like, like, when you look over your test, you can be like, oh, yeah, that's why I flipped it. Okay, so uh, whenever you uh, multiply or divide by a negative, you got to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol or flip it. So I said it before, this rainbow action doesn't work for me. So I like to make sure um, that my final step is lined up. We have an or compound inequality. So in this case, we want to find the union. So we're going to combine our answers. Let's combine them right now. We'll do one number line, highlight both endpoints, and then knock it out. So we have 4 thirds and 10 thirds. Uh, I'm very thankful that the denominators are the same because it's easier for me to see that since 4 is smaller than 10, then 4 thirds is less than 10 thirds. So 4 thirds should pop up first. If we're like, no, I'm not having it, then write the decimal uh, approximation. This is uh, 1.3, where 3 repeats, and this is uh, 3 and a third. So this is 1 and change, 3 and some change. So same order. All right, let's do this. First inequality uh, is the endpoint part of the solution. In this case, it is because it has the equal to part. So we can graph it. The remaining solutions are the values that are larger. So we're going to pull to the right. Second inequality. Uh, 10 thirds is part of the solution because we also have the equal to part. The remaining solutions are the values that are less than 10 thirds, so we're going to pull to the left. So we graphed all the numbers that are at least 4 thirds, and then we graphed all the numbers that are at most uh, 10 thirds. So pretty much we graphed the entire number line. So the solution is given by the set of all real numbers, which is correct, but unfortunately, all real numbers is um excuse me all real numbers is not an interval so let's write this in interval notation so in interval notation we are coming from the negative side so we're going from negative infinity pulling towards the positive side so it's the interval from negative to positive infinity now the question is could we have taken a shortcut yes but um, I feel like sometimes I, I can't convey what I'm trying to say. So that's how we did it algebraically first. Okay, my algebra will never fail me. Okay, but let's do this one more time. So we're going to call it C2. So we have absolute value of 3x minus 7 plus 8 is greater than or equal to 5. So again, it's not a mistake. That's, I, that's why I didn't call it D. It's the same problem, but do, done a little bit different. So absolute value inequality let's isolate the absolute value so same initial speech let's isolate the absolute value <coughs> and then set up the corresponding compound inequality so to undo the addition let's go ahead and subtract it from both sides 
and that will leave us with absolute value of 3x minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 3. So this is where I'm going to take a pause. I realize that the absolute value is being compared to a negative number. Whether we have an absolute value equation or absolute value inequality, if the absolute value is being compared to a negative number, then you may take a shortcut. So negative number, so that means we can take a shortcut. Okay? So it doesn't matter what value of x you plug in. Oh, I can say for all real numbers, but I don't want to say those words. It doesn't matter for what value of x you plug in. The absolute value is going to simplify to 0 or some positive number. So the question is, um, when is this positive number bigger than negative 3? Well, it's always going to be bigger than negative 3. So since it's always going to happen for any real number, then for that reason, the solution is given by the set of all real numbers. So again, I need to work on my wording for the shortcut, but um, if, you were, if you were able to understand what I was trying to say, thank you for working with me. And if not, then just do it algebraically. Uh, it took me a little bit longer, but at least it was not a guessing game. And don't guess, okay? All right, so in, in interval notation, the set of real numbers is given by the interval from negative to positive infinity. Fantastic. So I said that we were going to do four problems. That was our third problem. We have one more and then uh, we're good to go. Okay, so go ahead, put this away. Oh, my papers are falling. Problem D. We have, oh, I changed it, sorry. Problem D, because I made a spice here. We have absolute value of x minus 7. When we add 3 to it, I want that to be less than 2. Okay, so we have absolute value inequality symbol. We have an absolute value inequality. So let's go ahead and uh, solve it. First things first, we want to isolate the absolute value. So if you're not with the absolute value, you got to go. To undo an addition, let's go ahead and subtract. And then that will give us absolute value of x minus 7 is less than negative 1. And the question is, how are we going to handle it? Okay, so we can take a shortcut or we can do it algebraically. With your permission, we're going to do it algebraically first, meaning we're going to show all our work. And then we'll see if we can take a shortcut. Uh, why the shortcut? Because we're being compared to a negative number. Okay, uh, so let's take it from there. We have the absolute value isolated. Cool. Now I have to make the call if it's going to be an AND or an OR compound inequality. I really don't know because I tend to rely on my silly memory aid. So that like if I don't write it, then I'm going to forget. So we have one of the is less than. So thanks to like our silly memory aid, it's going to be an AND compound inequality. So we're going to say that the inside is less than this number. And its opposite is less than this number. Okay, so we have inside is less than the number, and its opposite is less than the number. Again, your book sets up the second inequality different, which is fine. They, they set it up correctly, but sometimes students don't apply it the way the book is telling you. So I recommend you do it like this, but it's you, so do whatever, do whatever you have to do. So let's go ahead, solve each inequality, and then take the intersection. So for the first inequality, to undo a subtraction, let's go ahead, add it to both sides, and that will give us x is less than 6. Bam, we're done. Second inequality, let's take the opposite, and then take it from there. Opposite of a positive term is a negative term. Opposite of a negative term is a positive term, and that should be less than negative 1. Work your magic to isolate the variable term. To undo an addition, let's go ahead and subtract. And that will leave us with negative x is less than negative 8. For the final stretch, to get rid of the times negative 1, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 1. And you know the drill. Let's go ahead and bust out those sirens. Let's go ahead and flip. So our statement should read x is greater than 8. I'm going to line up uh, my, my final statement to make it a little bit easier for me. Now, the directions does not say that you have to graph. The directions just say 
solve it and put your answer in interval notation. But for me, it's really difficult to go straight to the answer in interval notation. But if you're like, no, I'm on it, I can quickly identify the numbers that are less than 6 and at the same time bigger than 8. You can see that. Mer uh, Merry Christmas or more power to you. Knock it out. But since you're not going to take the test from me, you know the drill. I'm showing all my work. And compound inequality, work your magic to find the intersection. And when you're trying to find the intersection, you are trying to see what is it that they have in common. So we are going to graph both inequalities one at a time, highlighting both endpoints on the same number line. The reason why we highlight both endpoints is just to make it to make it easy to see what the overlap is. First inequality, we want all the values that are under 6. So 6 is out, so open circle, the actual solution should be smaller. Second inequality, we want all the numbers that are greater than 8. So 8 is out, open circle, and the actual values are the numbers that are larger. So we're going to pull to the right. Now moment of truth. Uh, what is in the intersection? What is it that they have in common? So let's go ahead, sandwich this, and let's see what we're eating. But there's no overlap. Okay, no matter how much I try, there is no overlap. So since there's no overlap, then they have nothing in common. And if they have nothing in common, then there's no solution. Cool. And remember, if there's no solution, then there is no interval. In interval notation, we said, oh, what's in the answer? It's all the real numbers that start here and end there. But there's nothing. Okay, so let's go ahead and knock this one uh, one more time. We're going to do it the shortcut way. Hopefully, I can convey what I'm trying to say. And if not, uh, you can do it algebraically. Okay, so we have absolute value of x minus 7 plus 3 is less than 2. Okay. So absolute value inequality, first things first, work your magic to isolate the absolute value and take it from there. So we're going to go ahead, subtract 3 from both sides, and that will leave us with absolute value of x minus 7 is less than negative 1. And if you could see my face, uh, you, could, you will realize that I'm smiling because I'm like, oh shoot, absolute value, negative number, claim that shortcut. So negative number makes me happy because that means that we can take the shortcut okay so bear in mind for any value of x that we plug in the absolute value is going to simplify to some non-negative number so zero or positive so then i'm like okay when can this positive number be less than negative one well that's a lie the the positive number that it evaluates to will never be less than negative 1. So since this can never happen, then there's no solution. So same problem then again. So on the directions, I'm always going to say like uh, show all your work. But depending on the kinds of problems that we knock out, I'm aware that you can just go on straight to answer fairly quickly. It's it's a personal choice. Am I excited that we didn't show a lot of work? Yeah, but that kind of requires for me to have something in the back of my mind. So do what you got to do. Okay, guys. So I said we were going to do four problems. This was our fourth problem. So we're good. Gracias.